Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak and I am super stoked to be back working on my double paddle canoe design. I just spent the last four weeks updating all of my online skin on frame kayak building courses and building a four hour long lightweight small boat camping series. So if you're interested in packing light out of small boats, make sure you check that out. But kind of in the meantime, while I was doing all that, I've been working on the last batch of prototype canoes that you saw in the last video and really just focusing on a lot of the systems, you know, so not exactly the hull design or the construction details, but all the other things that need to happen in these canoes to make them function the way I want them to. And if you remember from the last video, I mentioned that in the newer set of prototypes, I wasn't as happy as I was hoping to be because I went a little too far on some of the uh, shaping details. But in retrospect, I really hadn't given them a fair chance. I've taken them out on the water in a variety of conditions, and I'm actually pretty pleased with how these things are paddling. So even though I'm still gonna make some of the hull shaping changes that I'm hoping to make, it's not as big of a deal as I thought it was gonna be, and that means we're closer than I thought we were to kind of a finished design here. So that's really good news. So as far as what I've actually been working on these last few weeks, the main one is just flotation and rescue. You know, I know that generally when you're talking about double paddle canoes, flotation and rescue doesn't usually come into the equation. These things are usually used in pretty protected waters where you could just swim to shore if you had a problem. But coming from a kayaker's background, I personally don't feel safe in a boat unless I know that it's gonna stay floating and I could still paddle it even if it's swamped. And also if I don't have a strategy that I can get the water out and then get back into it safely and keep paddling on my journey. So that's been kind of an interesting interesting design challenge here because, you know, of course we can fill these things completely with flotation like a whitewater canoe and that, you know, solves that issue. But then you've got two big problems and one is that the canoe gets completely full of crap. It's not a very elegant solution. You feel kind of trapped in there. And also there's a pretty substantial setup time at the beginning and at the end of your boating experience. And for this design to be successful the way that I'm defining it, it really needs to be something that you can just grab off the top of your car or out of the back of your pickup walk down to the water, get in the boat and go. And if you have to make multiple trips back to the car for gear and other things, or if you have to stop and mess with something for 15 minutes when you're getting in or when you're getting out, that doesn't make it as usable or as fun. So I've been trying to find a solution that will allow me to have flotation, still keep the boats open and elegant on the inside, still allow them to nest together. And uh, the solution I came up with here is kind of a weird thing. What I've done is I've laced three inch diameter solid pool noodles all the way into the perimeter of the boat. And what these do is they keep the boat floating if it's swamped and they also keep it stable. So they don't float it high enough in the waters where you can bail it out with a bucket or something like that, but they do keep it floating well enough that you can paddle it to safety. So not really a viable solution if you're gonna be miles and miles from shore, but if you're just a couple football fields away from shore, like crossing a small lake or in a reservoir, I feel like this is a pretty good balance between clutter inside of the canoe, but also flotation and safety. And the cool thing about having these in here the way they are is the way that the flotation is distributed inside of the canoe, it makes it really easy to get the water out. So for instance, if this thing is swamped and you're floating in the water next to it, all you have to do is flip it up on its side and the canoe naturally dumps all the water out because it's floating on the pool noodle. And that's fantastic because that makes something like a paddle float rescue a whole lot quicker. You've already taken care of getting the water out of the boat. The only caveat being you need to hold on to it because if there's any wind, it's gonna take off just like that. So that kind of brings me to the other thing I've been working on, which is a paddle float rescue system. Now in a kayaking context, I am not a fan of paddle float rescues. There are so many better solutions for getting back into a kayak and self-rescuing. But for an open canoe, there's really not. And so what I was doing originally was I was using that same little bungee system that you've seen me tie down the thwarts and the catamarans off the, across the top of the canoe gunnels and trying to use that on my paddle and then rigging up a paddle float and getting back in. But I was running into a problem that every time I did that, I would end up swamping the canoe when I reached across to try to set up the paddle on the opposite side. And I realized that I was gonna need to come up with something more like a kayak, more of a fixed bungee system where I could set up the paddle float and then shove it right across under the bungees and have it pin the paddle down right here in a way that would keep the paddle from rotating as well. So the paddle float would stay on the side of the paddle it's supposed to, which would keep this gunnel higher up in the water when you're climbing back in the boat. Because even though the system that I was using with these little bungee loops was actually working, it wasn't working very well. And my my experience with 
small boat self rescue is if something is kind of dicey in a flat water calm circumstance, it's never going to work in real conditions. So I just kept messing with this whole system until I got something that had a big enough margin for error that I could get back in the boat in less than 60 seconds. Now, the cool thing about this is it actually led to a development on this boat that has really increased the versatility of everything I'm doing here. And if you remember back in the video where I was paddling down the John Day River, where I had a catamaran system set up across the top of the gunnels, that was working really well and it was utilizing these same little bungee loops. But messing around with those bungee loops has gotten to be kind of annoying for me. You know, I love them for tying down my spare paddle, my pump, my sail, all the little things inside the canoe. I think they're brilliant. But for actually attaching things across the top of the gunnel, suddenly I've just got way too many of these things around. And also they look kind of stupid up here as well. So I realized that once I got these self-rescue bungee loops in place, all I had to do was set up a second set of them forward in the boat and I could use them as my catamaran attachment points. And I'm looking at that and I'm like, well, if we've already got these set up seven inches apart for a paddle blade, then why are we going with these narrow little square catamaran things? Because the problem I had with those is even though they worked really well, there was no good place to put them and they were always in the way and just making the canoe look kind of shabby and cluttered. And so with this new attachment system, I realized that I could actually make catamaran outriggers that would double as floorboards. So these guys under here are one by five pine boards. I planed them down to about five eighths. And then on the other side, which just locks them into the frame of the canoe when they're working as floorboards is these little three eighths inch pegs. And how this works is these slide right underneath here like this and then over here and you just lock them right into here. And this system is so much more positive than the system I was using before. It's even stiffer than my old system and it is much easier to take on and off. You don't have to worry about losing all those little bungee loops. In addition, it's got a lot more functionality because these little outrigger surfaces here are wide enough that they function as seats and also it's nice as a little table as well. So it's just a way better solution for this in a way that stows out of the way better as well. And in addition to that, the one for the stern catamaran outrigger has a little attachment point that I can take on and off with a little thumb wheel. And that is where I can put my kayak motor. And this is something I haven't really talked about yet because I didn't know if it was gonna be very viable. I purchased this really expensive little lithium powered kayak motor a couple months ago. And honestly, it's just been kind of a contraption for me. It's been kind of more of a pain in the butt than it was worth, but I've been keeping messing with it because I felt like if I had the right setup, it could be really elegant and really easy to use. And it wasn't until I got to these particular catamaran outrigger things here, the motor actually mounts to the back one and has a little pivot point there. And then it has a tiller that stretches to the forward one right here. And I'm able to really, really quickly and easily take it on and off of its mount without having it make a whole bunch of clutter or weirdness inside the canoe. And we've had a couple of really fun adventures now where we use the kayak motor to motor in calm conditions and then the wind comes up and we take the motor out and then we put the sails up and we blow back downwind and you know steer the boat with a canoe paddle. And steering with a canoe paddle is something I want to talk about just a little bit more here because if you remember in my last videos, I was kind of frustrated not being able to come up with a good rudder solution for this boat. And I think a lot of that just came from my lifelong mistrust of steering oar situations. My own experience in using any kind of steering oar or steering paddle is that to stay on course, you usually end up contorted in some really awkward position. And I don't find that particularly relaxing. And so I wasn't expecting to be able to steer this thing very effectively or easily or non-obtrusively with a canoe paddle. So it was only after getting rid of the rudder assemblies altogether and going out and actually using this thing in both single mode and catamaran mode that I realized that this thing just steers beautifully, not just with weight shift like I was doing before, but also with just minimal inputs from the canoe paddle as well. So I think for now, I'm not even gonna worry about rudders. You know, for those of you who really wanna maximize your upwind performance, sail 
sailing this, this boat, you can always throw a lee board in right at this location. And this flat system here where you can shove a board underneath is a perfect place to put a mounting bracket for a lee board that would go in and out really easily without creating a lot of clutter in the canoe. So I probably won't do that just because I think it's a lot of complexity for really minimal gain in performance. Although, as you have seen in this video series, I'm constantly changing my mind about things, so who knows what I'll say next video about that. But that is an option for people that want it. Personally, I'm just loving just the overall simplicity of how this thing is set up right now. You know, I love how clean this is, how it's coming all together. This, what you see right here, is literally what it looks like when I'm heading down to the water right now. I've got a seat mat in the bottom of the boat. I've got my catamaran floorboards hidden underneath. I've got my canoe paddle that stows nice and tight out of the way right here. I've got my sail rig, which stows nice and tight out of the way on the other side. I've got my pump and I've got my paddle float here, which doubles as a really nice, comfortable little seat, either against my sacrum to kind of prop up my spine or also to sit up a little bit higher in calmer conditions. And then finally, the last things I have with me is my day bag. This is my new day bag. It's a watershed Chatuga bag. I think it's 30 liters. And this thing is awesome because unlike the ditch bag solutions I've used in the past, I can actually get all my stuff for a full day on the water in here and it's super duper watertight. So kind of a pricey little accessory, but it's nice because everything is in here. So when I roll up to the put-in, I open the back of the van, I grab the boat, I grab the bag, I close the van, I walk to the water, I put on my PFD and I go paddling. And that is the usability that I'm looking for in this particular type of boat. So one more thing I forgot that I want to talk about that has to do with this pool noodle flotation system here is that one of the main reasons I like this so much is that it allows the canoes to still be able to nest together. So you can leave the flotation in the boat and you can put one canoe into the other canoe and they don't nest quite as tightly, but that's actually a good thing because this little three or four inch cavern of space that remains down here at the bottom of the canoe is a perfect place that you can put all of your gear. So you just take your gear, unhook it from these little bungee loops, drop it into the bottom of the canoe, take the second canoe, nest it in you there as well. And that just really helps with the usability of it because the thing I was finding is that when I had to take all of my gear out of the canoe and put it separately in the back of the van, well then we were back to that situation where there was a 10 or 15 minute setup time before we could actually go down to the water. So it's cool to be able to keep all the stuff with the boat and still have them nest together. Now, where I think I'm gonna go with this just overall thing here is in a couple weeks, I'm gonna start working on a second set of prototypes here. I've got a pretty good sense that those are gonna to come together in the way that I think would be a good kind of semi-finished product for this particular design. And I think what I'm gonna do here is actually start building a video course. Now, the way I would normally do this is I would work on these boats for an entire another year. I would build them everything from 10 feet long to 30 inches wide, all the way up to 36 inches wide and 16 feet long, narrowly narrow ones, 25 inches wide by 15 feet long, and just every possible variation, and also learn how to do it in almost every different type of wood that people are gonna be able to get commonly in different parts of the world. And that's just kind of my own personal ethic as far as design goes. I like to have everything be absolutely perfect before I release it, but I've been getting a ton of requests from people to want to start building one of these boats. So I think I'm going to do something kind of new this time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and build a video series as a beta test on this. So it's going to have all the systems that I'm creating to be able to construct this canoe really fast and easy and simply. And we're going to evolve that over time. And if I do this in a way that's hard for me because I like to spit out dimensions while I talk. If I can somehow manage to build this video course and not say any specific measurements and leave all of the measurements in a separate PDF, then I should be able to continually update that and evolve that throughout the design process so we can keep evolving this canoe but still keep that central video. And then sometime maybe next summer, even maybe the next summer after that, depending on how long it takes, I can actually take the finished version of this and bring it up to full price. So I think that's a pretty good compromise and it might be a good deal for those of you out there that are looking to build one of these because when I first release this for the next year or so, it's gonna be really cheap until we get it totally dialed in and then it's gonna be a little more expensive. So that's the plan for right now. Thanks for watching this video. I know this was a little bit long, but I've got a lot to cover and at least it wasn't 30 minutes long like last time. I promise I will never do that again. Take care.